send it in, full beans. Look at that, it's coming around. Oh my God! <laughs> Find me another electric SUV that does that. When the Mustang Mach-E first hit the streets, everyone had a strong opinion. Purists hated it. People with an open mind literally thought it was the future. I, being the owner of a V8 Mustang GT, well, I summed it up in one simple sentence, really. Good car, just not a good Mustang. Fast forward a year and Ford is attempting to inject a much needed dose of that Mustang spirit with this, the Mach-E GT the fastest, most powerful version of the Mach-E to date. This one uses twin motors to produce 487 horsepower, more than you'll find in the V8. Peak torque is up too, substantially to a staggering 860 newton meters. So the numbers are good, but how does it feel? To find out, I'm gonna do a launch. It'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? Now, in any normal Mustang Mach-E, you have three driving modes, Whisper, Active and Untamed. But in the Mach-E GT, there's a fourth mode called Untamed Plus, which is normally reserved for racetracks. And look what we have here today. Shall we? Yeah. Right, so foot on the brake, accelerate. Ooh, it's almost like it's straining at the leash. Send it. Oh my, yes. That is actually, that's properly quick, isn't it? No doubt about it. Does it launch like a Mustang? Well, not really, because if I did that, in my five litre V8, what you get is a lot of tire smoke and not much forward momentum. My car is really good at turning fuel into tire smoke. This thing is really good. Ooh, it's skinny too. It's really good at turning power into speed. The 0 to 60 time on a rolling start, according to Ford, is 3.7 seconds, which is very, very decent. It's not quite as fast as, say, a Shelby GT500, but that's on paper. I reckon in the real world, because this has all-wheel drive and it puts its power down, this thing would outdrag a Shelby GT500. Woo! Especially in the UK, where the ground is often slippery and wet. In the real world, this is a quick car, trust me. Woo! Quite playful too. What's going on? Let's talk about brakes while we're here. It's got 385 millimeter discs up front, four piston calipers front and rear, and they're generally quite effective. You do have to be careful though. You have to make sure you brake well in advance of the corner because once you get into a corner, you might find that it's a little bit too late to stop because it's carrying quite a lot of mass, 2,200 kilograms to be precise. This thing is not a Lotus. Does it drive like a Lotus in the bends? Let's find out, shall we? <laughs> it's actually surprisingly playful. Right, here's a little corner here. We'll chuck it in and see what it does. Find me another electric SUV that does that. So the performance is good. It goes like stink and it actually corners pretty well. And do you know what? Ford have also addressed the other big issue I had with the standard Mach-E. They fixed the looks. Cast your mind back to the standard car. It had this horrible moustache element. Now they've removed that completely and the front end is a lot more sleek, a lot more aggressive. It's still got the Mustang inspired front lights as well as the rear lights, but the whole thing just looks to me anyway, a lot more sexy, a lot more believable in its mission to convince us that it's not just an ordinary electric family car pretending to be a Mustang. Of course, we can't ignore the fact that the Mach-E does the family thing really well too. It has room for five to sit in comfort, a large boot, front and rear, and plenty of mod cons, including a nice big infotainment display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Not to mention a great stereo system that you can actually hear without a noisy exhaust getting in the way. It even has a pretty good range from its 88 kilowatt hour battery pack, 310 miles in the right conditions, although more realistically for me, around 250. My only problem with the Mackie in general, and that includes this GT version, is that the ride is a little bit eh, it's lumpy. The suspension is not the best in the world. Even out here on a racetrack, it's just, I mean, it's less than impressive, shall we say. It feels a bit like you're walking on a trampoline rather than walking on a flat surface. It's always a bit bobbly, a bit unsettled. Even out here where 
it's a perfectly smooth surface, it always feels a little bit like, <laughs> a little bit too bouncy and you get head toss, which means your head's always moving around. It's just not the most comfortable car in the world. If I'm gonna be picky as well, I would say there's actually <laughs> quite a lot of understeer. If you get into a corner with a bit too much speed on, it takes too long to scrub that speed off. But like I said, there is oversteer, quite a lot of it in fact. So it does have a little bit of that Mustang personality to it. Not many other cars will let you do that really. I mean, there's the, <laughs> there's the Porsche Taycan rear wheel drive, which does slide about. But in general, all the electric family cars on the market are set up in a similar way. They don't feel anywhere near as playful as the Marquis GT. So there's a definite market for this car. Mums and dads who wanna have fun. <laughs> all right, it's not a sports car. It's not a sports car. You gotta have your wits about you. But the fact it's doing this is hilarious. Obviously, it doesn't come cheap. The Mark E GT retails for £65,000, which is rather a lot of cash for what is basically just a crossover, even if it is a madly powerful one. And it's hard to ignore the fact that other electric crossovers are better to drive. Some ride better, some have more space, some are smoother, some might have arguably more upmarket badges. But there's no electric crossover I can think of that's quite as wild and entertaining as this one. I think in a nutshell, this car can be summed up as being entertaining because there aren't many cars on the market that have this kind of behavior. It does all the boring stuff, but it also, to its credit, lets you have a little bit of a laugh too, on your terms. I can't think of another electric car that has this particular blend of characteristics. If you've really got to have an electric SUV on your driveway and you've really also got to have a little bit of fun, then the Mustang Mark EGT is definitely worth looking at.